the spice must flow. Ah, uh, friends. So I wasn't even sure 100% how I was going to do this review. It's going to be non-spoiler for the time being. I'll let you know if I get into spoilers, but it's more of a reflection. Maybe this is not the, it's more a selling point for you to please read these books. I have another one here too. <laughs> there are six Frank Herbert books that I highly recommend. I know books are old fashioned, but uh, if you can tell from my well-worn copy of the original Dune, what, what, what years is this copy from? I think it's from 1965, I could be wrong. It's beat up, so it's, it's not really worth anything, but this is the, the, the subject. How do you film the unfilmable film? How do you do it? And that is a question that Denis Villeneuve seems to have answered in part, because we only got one part. Uh, good news, two parts have been greenlit, or at least the second half of the first book. So this, this chunko, this chungus of a book here, we got through half of it, folks. We did it to get enough for a second one. Barely. In the U.S., it only did about $40 million its first weekend. <clears throat> Granted, it was released on HBO Max. It was the best movie for Warner Brothers since the pandemic. It, it beat out um, King Kong versus Godzilla. So just to give you a little bit of context as to why they probably are making the second one. The budget is also not that big. It's one sixty-five, which is smaller than you know certain marvel movies and things like that so for for a movie like this it's, it's actually i think it actually did pretty good it had done like 210 220 i think worldwide maybe 240 either way you know the point is it's a really old book uh the author's been been passed for a long time and in, in my opinion this is one of the most I've never seen a screenplay be so like th this thing was such a hardcore dedication to the book. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. I've seen like maybe since Lord of the Rings, the extended cut, have I seen something that tried to match the book so closely, almost slavishly to a point where it, it was uh, to its own detriment. It did that. I think this you know audiences are are interested in, in complex characters but it, we'll go through some of the characters but when you get one or two scenes for them you're you're really going to struggle to have emotional attachment to some of them but i think <clears throat> overall the acting was superb the visual effects were something like i've like just never seen they were just so awesome so great um even Christopher Nolan himself said that he's never seen uh, CGI, practical and visual effects crafted together so well that he he's never seen anything like it. So he had nothing but positive things to say for it. So I think when the community at large and and it's 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 really hard too because it's a hard sci-fi movie. Like this is like hardcore sci-fi. It's unknown worlds, things that people aren't familiar with. So I could see why the audience would struggle with it. There's also a lot of characters and the movie itself doesn't do like as much justice to the characters as you would think. I mean, it gives like base level motivations for certain people, but you, you would have liked to explore those relationships a little bit more. Although I will say on some level, the book does do the same thing. <clears throat> there are a lot of characters moving in and out of this. So, I can't really fault the director. I, I'd like to point out a couple of things that I thought were extremely telling uh, about just how closely they they worked on getting the book. I mean, every scene, every look from every character meant something else. And I thought that's why the acting was superb because clearly they were directed to do that. I don't know that all of them were like masterful. I mean, I've read these things like probably six times each, right? 
I don't think anybody on that cast read these books <laughs> as heavily as some other people. So when you have scenes with um, with different characters doing things, like I feel like everything was intentional in order to capture the book as closely as possible. Now they edited, a, uh, you know, they cut out a bunch of stuff for time. Some of it I'm, I'm okay with. Some of it I was like, eh, I wish I could have seen that. So I'll go through, I'll, I'll just mention a couple things that don't get seen that I have a little bit of a criticism with. Uh, you don't get to see the Emperor or the High Court. Those characters are very important in the long run. So <clears throat> when you get a payoff with them, it's going to be hard to even comprehend where they're from or what they're doing. Uh, so I thought it might have been interesting because the, the David Lynch movie introduces them right off the bat. And they do have scenes in the in the book, so I, I was curious as to why they cut that. But again, it's probably for time. I thought the runtime was good. Some people said the movie was boring. I don't agree with that. I thought that the pacing was actually pretty good, for all things considered. I don't think there was a lot of like boring parts per se. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of world building, so you need to take time for that. I also wish you could have met the Dune Navigators. They mentioned them, and then I thought they would have a kind of a unique take on them when they leave the spaceship and they have the um the the guy announced the decree that things were going to change like arrakis was going to change hands i thought uh that was a good spot where they could have shown the the guild and, and what i like about the movie is it does not explain anything to you it visually shows you everything you need to know but does not explain anything and i will get more into that but for one example they don't explain the the force shield aspect <clears throat> of anything. They don't explain that that the um, why everybody uses force shields. They just show them, but then they show that the force shields have uh, that the only way to get through them is is adult is like a slow attack, which I kind of one of my criticisms there. Like it seems like they kind of understood that and then they stopped understanding it later in the in in the movie. But I mean that's for I don't know, that's a fighting technique that doesn't exist, so I don't know how anybody would know how to do that or how to film it properly. The, the first fight scene with it was was pretty cool, but I think it's difficult to understand that you have to like attack somebody, but you can't cut through their force shield. You have to go real slow, like it's, it's weird. So they didn't explain that, um, but when I it was speaking about the attention to detail, things like they included the Atreides battle language, which is a form of sign language. So if you noticed, the, obviously there were subtitles for it, but they, they really, really went all out to make sure that they had some like crucial, not crucial details, but details that really flesh out everything where even the staff understands this, this battle language. Um, which I thought was really cool because they, you know, they use obviously it had an advantage when they could communicate non-verbally to people, but it has a name. It's called the Atreides battle language. They also had um, things like the ornithopters. So they show when they're on Caladan, which is uh, supposed to be a. It's supposed to be. This is one change from the book that I'm not sure how I felt about it, and it also reflects in the score. So there might be something to that, where you have on Caladan, you, you have the. It's supposed to be this like soft water world, like a uh, like a like this beautiful paradise. But they turned it into the Scottish Highlands, and I guess it makes sense because you're trying to show like, look, the Atreides aren't that soft. Like, yeah, they had water. Um, in, in plenty, but they they were no soft people. So how do you visually represent that? You know, Caladan, in comparison to Arrakis, which is a desert, dry, super harsh. How do you how do you show that they still have like uh, a warrior spirit? Well, they picked them being from like the Scottish Highlands to the point of where they had bagpipes, uh, where they present themselves on the planet Arrakis. So I thought that was kind of interesting and they tied it into the score, which is another point that some people really, really hate, um, but I'll get back into that. So anyway, like one of the other details that they were talking about was or that I thought was really interesting, the ornithopters. So on Caladan, they have like spaceships that fly around because, you know, they don't have crazy sandstorms, but on Arrakis, due to the uh, unforgiving weather, they talked about it, the Corolla storms that can go like 500 
miles per hour or some crazy <clears throat> so they can shear metal uh they could they could yes they can shear metal with how powerful these storms are uh they're flying these these things that look like dragon flies which is pretty much exactly how they're described in the book and i thought the technology like the way they described it they showed the technology was really cool but again super slavish to the book where it's like oh my gosh you guys went out on that much detail so i thought that was really cool um let's go back to the score for a hot second i didn't not like I, I didn't feel, like normally with movies they have themes for people like there might be a theme for Chani one of the characters or it might be the theme for Timothy Chalifant playing uh, Paul Atreides or something like that all of those things are you would expect those and maybe they were in there and I just didn't hear them I just didn't get that but what you got was a very alien sounding soundtrack so a lot of people hate it, but I, I don't I didn't think it was bad. I did, but just didn't think it was as memorable. I remember a lot of the kind of like weird alien sounding effects and things like that. Like it's not your typical sweeping orchestral or anything. There's also elements like I said, the Sc Scottish bagpipes and even like Scottish Highland themes ran through it. So <clears throat> he was trying to use the soundtrack to give you cues to the cultures not necessarily for the betterment of the movie itself so i'm not going to say that Han, it's Hans zimmer's best work but i understand it's a tool for the movie and in such a way that they included it between the clearly the director and Hans zimmer spoke about what they wanted to hear and see visually so they tied the two together which i i thought was actually pretty cool like i i appreciate what they were going for uh whether or not i thought it was that memorable a little different so thought that was interesting how about we go through the characters and i'll just give you my thoughts on how close they were to what i think you would see in the book you know in the mind's eye and then what does that seem like here uh let's take a look here Got the music playing in the background. There we go. So, like, uh, Timothy Chalamet. I I've never seen him act before, so he was kind of a new one to me. I thought he hit all the notes right. He, he People say, like, oh, he's a boy. He's supposed to be a boy. He's supposed to be 15 or 16 years old in the book. So I think he hit all those those well. I think his emotional outbursts and things like that I thought, I thought were pretty good I, I i would give him a he was a solid solid choice so i i don't think you could do a ton better than him so that that was good i thought that the baron uh stellan skarsgård you know when in comparison to the date the i think it's 84 lynch film very different takes but i liked him i thought he was really really good he clearly enjoyed what he was doing <laughs> you know he they think they said he weighed supposed to weigh 600 pounds i mean the guy went all in and I thought he was pretty good. I, I thought that he worked out really well. It's what he should look like. Um, I still, there was one thing I didn't totally understand why they threw it in. And maybe they're trying to give you an idea of the genetic manipulation that goes on. But there was a character. It was like a, like a human dog hybrid thing. I didn't really understand what that was. And I, I mean, I kind of understood it. If you go like way, way down the rabbit hole and get into the far, far away books like Chapter House Dune, you gotta remember the Dune saga spans like, as you may have seen in my video where I explain things that are essential about understanding Dune, that you may, uh, it's like 15,000 years of human history, give or take, maybe 12, but somewhere in that range. So it's it's uh, it's interesting. Uh, the Beast Raban, he was in it just enough because he's really not a cat. He's a character kind of mentioned, but very rarely has any scenes. Uh, but I thought Dave Bautista was perfect for it. Just, you know, an angry hulking man, which is pretty much what you needed. <clears throat> I was surprised there was one character they did not introduce. Um, this is not necessarily a spoiler. I, maybe it is, but uh, they didn't have... Sting's character, who's very important. His name is Fade Rautha. They did not include Fade in this. I think, uh, I haven't read anybody else's reviews, so I don't really know what other people are saying about it. This is just, you know, I wanted to take some days to really think about this myself as a big time Dune fan and just digest what I saw. 
And um, so he's also part of the Harkonnen. I also didn't like the pronunciation of, I always thought it was Harkonnen, um, but they called it Harkonnen, which I thought was a little weird, but whatever, tomato, tomato. So uh, Dave Batista was good. Um, this is one thing that I thought was under, I thought uh, David Dallas Malchian, who was Polka Dot Man in Suicide Squad, really came, he he shined he, he kind of stole through it i also think he's a character in the books that steals some scenes peter devries devries what they didn't let you know and they try to subtly if you see on his lip he's a mentat he's a human computer they didn't really tell you that um but they gave one a really really awesome scene where they did show you what that means but again, they, they try to visually tell you things and you're just like, oh, he's just like an assistant to the Baron. But yeah, it still makes sense. But I want to show you when we get to the character, I'll explain it. Uh, Zendaya was also not in it that much. She was fine. She didn't do a whole lot. So, I mean, she seems fine for Chani. I did hear that Chani, it's the, the book. The next part is Chani's story. Although I really kind of look at it more of Lady Jessica's story if you're reading the book. So I don't know if that's just like a, a thing that they said to get people like happy. Because there's one other thing that was a controversy, which we'll get to, that didn't like do much for me at least. Um, didn't matter. Oscar Isaac is Doolito. I thought he was perfect. There's not much more he could say about it. Uh, one of the things that was one of the really incredible details that they really went out of their way to show you a lot were the the things about his father. His the you know Paul's grandfather was not a spoiler mauled by a boar or not a boar by a bull a big giant bull. Apparently he liked to do, go bull fighting. So they kind of showed scenes throughout. They, there was a, a giant. Um, portrait of his father and the bull's head that had killed him they had that mounted <clears throat> and they they really tied it in together and and it's supposed to be something thematic that people were supposed to understand i don't know if they did a great job of it but it's kind of a pride thing in the family like it's a prideful streak they kind of mention that there's something with the atreides but uh either way oscar isaac did great i thought i really enjoyed him i think his casting was really good uh, Rebecca Ferguson, Lady Jessica. She had the the most difficult part, and I thought she did it very well. I'll be curious to see like where it goes, but um, she she had the most difficult part to 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 like. She had to understand all these nuances, and I really felt like her performance was clued in to the book in the sense of like she had to understand everything and there's so much nuance to what she delivered it was really good i really liked her um yeah i just enjoyed her performance i don't know her at all i think she's from the white queen but i i don't know that much about her but i thought she was very good <clears throat> javier Bar bardim was great as stilgar i'd like to see more of this character we'll see where it go i know where it goes but i i really think that he did a good job with what what his role was uh i thought there was like one of the fun <laughs> one of the more the breaking of levity scenes was pretty good so you know there was an actual like laughing fun moment there was a couple of like tiny jokes to make to break you out of the how intense this was josh brolin is gurney halleck i thought was really good he is uh <laughs> he's Patrick Stewart's counterpart in the David Lynch film and did the role exactly how he should I thought he was really good um, Jason Momoa as Duncan Idaho now here's the wild card because a lot of people are making fun of the different hairstyles that he had but he played it he is the character that you're looking for like if you want somebody and if you really because because Denny Villeneuve had some interesting comments where he said this is just the beginning I think there's potential to to build a lot more of the franchise if you want to make it a franchise around him I don't know that you could film something like God Emperor of Dune I just I don't know that you could do that movie but if you wanted to you could include him but it would be interesting to see how that all works out 
because things get a little wild. Like we talk about hardcore sci-fi, it gets real hardcore. <laughs> the later you go in, it gets like almost unrecognized. Like it's out of control how deep it goes. But if you wanted to keep it going and you wanted someone with some pull, uh, Jason Momo will help you, I think. Um, but he was, he was fine as his parts. Like he did fine. He did what you would expect him to do. Um, so I enjoyed him there. Uh, let's see this uh, I thought this guy actually had some other scene stealing things and I really liked him a lot uh, Stephen McKinley Henderson as Thuffer Hawat he is uh, if you notice on his lip he is also a mentat and the cool part that they visually show you that he's calculating things he like rolls his eyes up into the back of his head and they turn like all white so that he could do calculations for <clears throat> for the Duke and while Peter I don't think ever I don't I'm pretty sure he did never do that he has the same skills uh, they don't explain any of that why there's no machines they don't go into any of that why they don't have computers why they're using like basic stuff if you want a more spoilery like in-depth analysis of what's going on in the movie I'd be happy to do one just let me know down in the comments because I'm trying to keep this as spoiler free as possible and I'm already going a little bit longer than I usually would uh, here's the one controversy, uh, Lea, Sharon Duncan Brewster is Leah Keynes. Uh, while she was race and gender swapped, I didn't really care. It was fine. Like she did a fine job. Her role was exactly the same role as it was in the book. Um, there's really no difference and she's just exists and does her thing. Like it's just... So I, I wasn't super upset about it. It didn't really bother me. Um, she, she, she was fine. So, I mean, whatever. Didn't really do one way or the other for me. I thought uh, there were some really cool moments. Chang Chen with Dr. Yue was good. It was a little difficult to understand motivations here from, from like a movie perspective, but I thought he was really good. Had some really interesting moments. Um, I like what he did. I thought they were connecting something. They showed something in it. Maybe you could look for this and it's not really a spoiler, but they showed like, they don't really explain necessarily the religions that are going on in this world. They, in the movie, but there is like a version of the Bible that they use and they showed it in the movie and they didn't really explain what it was. I'm pretty sure it was Gun uh, Gunny who was reading the Bible, but um, it's just interesting, like the amount, like I said, of detail that they throw in and where they chose to put the detail in or, or pull it back. Uh, let's see. Short Rampling is the Reverend Mother Moheim. I, th I thought she was all right. I didn't get the sense of menace that I would have suspected from her. Um, but she was good. She, she was, it was interesting. I, I thought that scene, which is a pretty interesting scene, wasn't my favorite depiction of that, but I guess they didn't want to copy the David Lynch one either. So they wanted to make it a little bit different. So I thought that was kind of interesting, uh, take on it. I thought it looked really cool, but at the same time, you, you don't want to copy what I, cause they, he, I'm sure Villeneuve knew he was going to be compared to the David Lynch film. So. I thought that would I wouldn't want to be in that position. It's a pretty difficult position to be in to be compared to David Lynch. Whether whether or not people think it was a bomb, it's still considered kind of a cold classic. You know, you've got Patrick Stewart in it and a bunch of other actors uh, who are pretty famous. You've got Sting. Like, there's all sorts of famous people in there. So overall, I really I really enjoyed it. It was a uh, like a love letter in my, in my mind to Dune fans who've been looking for something like the David Lynch one is good in my mind, but also kind of like scattered and broken in parts. And they had to make some pretty serious changes to it for people to comprehend what was going on. You can't just get a movie. There's no way you could do Dune the book in one movie it just wouldn't be possible i thought they broke the book at the right spot i would say if you were going to do a book like you could easily do like dune messiah or or children of dune i mean they're substantially thinner books you could do those in one film and not really worry about it so it's it's a uh, it was really 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 good i was super happy when i saw it 
and I'm gonna watch it again and it's gonna be in my top movies I think it's the guy the director he's just a master like the guy knows how to do like f every frame was brilliantly shot they're all beautiful like works of art uh, how, the, the scenes where he's showing how beautiful the spice can be in contrasting to how difficult it is to live on Arrakis and how people are complaining about it, how hard it is and how harsh the conditions are. But the people who live there find it to be beautiful at times. And the sandworm, I didn't even talk about the sandworms. I love there, that interpretation was awesome. It was just, it was awesome. Breathtaking. I wish I could have seen it in IMAX. I definitely wish I could have seen it in IMAX. I think it's one you should if you can. I highly, highly recommend it because you're going to get this blaring score <laughs> and you're going to get this, like these super intense visuals. And it's just like, it's, it's beautiful and brutal and all at the same time. I didn't think it, it's all, it's kind of cool too, because it's, it wasn't very, uh, it's not particularly like scary or violent. like or there's no bad language. Oh, that would be one big criticism that, that I thought of that kind of took me out of the film just a tiny bit. Uh, Timothy Chalamet had two lines in the movie where he's like, he was trying to make it seem more natural and it sounded like today's vernacular. So I didn't really like it. He goes, at one point he just says to his mother, are you good? Like, that's just not the way that the book talks. That's the way people today talk. It's not, and it kind of pulled me like out of the whole thing. So and that, that was, there was another line just like that where I don't know if they were improvising or it seemed like maybe that was an improvisational part, but it was definitely something that took me out of it that I, di I didn't like. But for the rest of it, I mean, all of, like some of the dialogue seems to be lifted directly from the book or or partially they had the litany of fear, which is really cool that they did that. That's usually something people say in their head, but they, they had it for real. I, it's just so many tiny details that are just so incredible. Um, just awesome. So see it. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It's like I said, if not the best adaptation of a book I've ever seen, next to Lord of the Rings, the extended cut version. I, I don't think there's anything that rivals it where you just have so much care and detail. And I think Denis Villeneuve said it best. I think he said something along the lines like, Dune is my world now. And while Frank Herbert, the genius who wrote these books is, is still, and the books are always gonna be better, but it's as close as you're gonna get to the book as, you, as I've ever seen as anything so watch it enjoy it enjoy it with your family bring some friends over catch it on a it's good on hbo max too that's where i watched it it was on the tv and i just turned out the lights and i was totally sucked in absolutely enjoyable i know this was a long one but uh thank you so much for listening i really appreciate it if you got this far through if you didn't get the idea i really like dune a lot and if you're looking for a really good channel that can explain a ton of the stuff from Dune, I'm gonna, I would like to link it right here. It's called Quinn's Ideas. Man's a Dune expert. And uh, <laughs> I would love to have a conversation with him one day because we would geek out so hard on Dune, it would be a little obnoxious. And he has some of the same ideas that I have about uh, the philosophy and, not, and also some of the, there, there are books that go beyond Frank Herbert's lifespan. Uh, they, they had outlines for other books and his son took them over and there's some differentiation. I've read some of them too. Most of them actually. So anyway, um, if you like what you heard today, please like and subscribe. I hope we earned your subscription today. I hope you enjoyed this review. I tried to keep it as spoiler free as possible. I think I did. I might have only slipped up a little teeny tiny tiny bit and um, be sure to catch our live or well at least our full length audio podcast you can catch that anywhere you want wherever you can get podcasts itunes spotify stitcher all those great places you can also uh catch us live stream it 7 30 p.m eastern standard time on friday nights and from all of us here at our reviews will kill you to all of y'all at home we love y'all but i'm on to the next one